محمد وال محمد على حب الزحراء صلوا على محمد وال محمد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الأبرار يشربون من كأس كان مزاجها كافورا عينا يشرب بها عباد الله عينا يشرب بها عباد الله يفجرون تفجيرا يوفون بالنذر يوفون بالنذر ويخافون يوما كان شره مستطيرا يوفون بالنذر ويخافون يوما كان شره مستطيرا ويطعمون ويطعمون الطعام على حبه مسكينا ويتيما وأسيرا إنما نطعمكم لوجه الله لا نريد منكم جزاء
الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والشمس وضحاها والغمر إذا تلاقى والنهار إذا جلاقى والليل إذا يغشاقى والسماء والشمس وضحاها والقمر إذا تلاها والنهار إذا جلاها والليل إذا يغشاها والسماء صدق الله العلي العظيم Thank you, Sayyid Murtada, for the beautiful recitation. Let's give him another loud salawat, please. Tonight's topic is the first steps to breaking a habit. And it's going to be presented by our wonderful brother and speaker, Hajj Wissam Bezzi. So help me in welcoming. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wal-mursaleen. Abil Qasim Muhammad wa ala ali bayitihi al-tayibin al-tahirin. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. قل رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه لي. Brothers and sisters, I'm honored to be here. This is my community. This is where I was raised. I'm one of you. I've been around the world, and I'm honored to be part of this community. And it's a treasure just to be here. Trust me. What we own here and what we have. The least that we have is each other. We have to recognize what's really happening around us. And we have to re really pay attention. Our level of awareness needs to be at heightened levels. Because as our kids are walking around, trust me, there's a war. And it's a thought war. It's a psychological war. And whether you like it or not, you're being programmed. Bottom line. Your cell phone knows you more than you know yourself. You know where the brain is now? It's no longer in your head. You know where it's at? Anybody guess? thumb. This is the most powerful thing you own now. It controls you, whether you like it or not. 
You ever seen a person just scrolling mindlessly? Just they pull out their phone, just scrolling. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. When it's excessive, it's a problem. So tonight, I want to talk to you about what makes beautiful actions. Why, when you, as a person, you see something that's beautiful, someone displays a beautiful action. Why do you gravitate towards that? Why? And what happens in how you have to watch yourself? There's five steps that you have to understand that at the end of the day, you're responsible for your soul. No one is going to be sitting next to you. My nephews are here, very young. My niece is here. My father's here. I'm honored. I'm honored. But what makes beautiful actions? There was a time, one of my friends, he's on his way to an interview. Six-figure job. He sees a person stranded on the side of the road. For some reason, his heart told him, go see what's wrong with that person. He pulls over. It was a lady. From there, he goes to the passenger side. He doesn't go to the driver's side. He goes to the passenger side. He knocks on the window. She lowers the window. He says, are you okay? She's like, yes, I'm going to be late for work, but I'm having car trouble. He's like, is there anything I can do? She tells him, could you call? She, her phone wasn't with her. Could you call a truck for me? He's like, sure. He's like, do you want me to wait with you in my car just to make sure that you're okay? He's on his way to a job interview. And he pulls back and he says, you know what? There's someone in need. Now what happens when we go through stuff like that? I'm going to complete the story at the end. But this, you have to understand that you have been impregnated with this. You as a person, we love beautiful actions. Why? Because hubbul jamal, we love beauty. Beauty is within you. You love it. You gravitate towards it. Why do you do that? Why do you gravitate towards beauty as a person? In the Quran, in the Quran Allah Azza wa Jal says it clearly. It says, وَإِنَّهُ لِحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ What, can anybody finish it? La shadid. We love it. We love beautiful things. What is beauty? What is, when you look at a beautiful person, some of us, MashaAllah, Allah has really gifted us. You look, and they're beautiful people. But those beautiful people, they just like display themselves everywhere. Some of the most insecure people are the most beautiful. It's amazing. I deal with a lot of clients, and I deal with a lot of insecurity. <clears throat> but this is what happens. So watch this. Why do we love beauty? It's innate. It's within us that we, as Allah has made us like that. What is beauty? Beauty is symmetry, meaning one side is symmetrical to the other. It's balanced. You have a balanced face. You have a balanced what? Aspect to you. When that happens and you create that balance, you have beauty. But beauty is not just encompassed in physicality. Beauty is encompassed where? Also in your own actions. So now, he waits with her. She gets out of the car. She goes to him. She goes, do you need to go somewhere? He's like, don't worry about it. She goes back to the car. So now, He's sitting there, doesn't do anything, just sitting. 
Imagine you're waiting for the next thing to happen, and you've just completely stopped your whole world. This is tawakkul. وَسَلَّمْتُ أَمْرُكَ لِلَّهِ And you've just what? You put your conditions in Allah's hands. How many of us have that kind of courage? How? How do you do something like that? Because you believe that Allah has the ends. He controls the ends. Not you. You don't control the end of the interview. He does. The outcomes are on him. You just take the conditions to get there. Do we believe in that? That's not easy. That's difficult. So now what happens? Let's move forward. Hubbul Jamal. We love beautiful actions. It's innate. We said that beauty is symmetry. Let me give you an example. Some of us, and actually all of us, we have four powers in the soul. Two quick ones I just want to talk, touch on real quick. Al-Quwa Al-Ghadabiyya wa Quwa Al-Shahwiyya. You have what? One power of anger. Another power is what? Desire. If you take the power of anger, and if it doesn't have balance, guess what? It becomes ugly. What happens when someone loses complete control? What happens? How do you look at that person? It's very difficult even control yourself at that level now what happens when someone is passive when they need to be aggressive what happens when a person needs to be brave but they become a coward because of inaction that balance is situational if someone one of you guys let me get some let me be big guys here wait, wait. Who, who can I pick on real quick I said, okay, Mahdi. Some, if Mahdi, if someone's beating up your mother or father, anybody close to you, what's your obligation? You're going to apply the principle of protection. What's your obligation? Eye for an eye. What are you going to do to that guy? Are you going to sit there and say, he's 6'2", 6'3", 250, I think I can take him? Are you going to do that? But what are you going to do after? Are you going to just wait and just fiddle your thumbs? and? Okay, so what are you going to do? Okay, why? Why is that important? What do you need inside of you to happen? What do you need to feel? Hassan. Imam Ali alayhi salam. He says, you are as brave as how much anger you can muster. That's your bravery. If you are a person who is that, in that moment, you cannot generate anger, guess what? What happens when that person is done with the action? And you just stood there because you were afraid. That whole equation now is over. Your chance is over. The window has closed. What are people going to say about you now? Are you a coward? Or are you brave? Once the window closes, that's it. Regret sets in. Because if you don't move at that moment, that's it. That's positive anger. Negative anger is when you don't move. When you become a coward on that side. Beautiful actions is something called al-hilm. Al-hilm is what? It's the balance between someone who's irrational and out of control to someone who's what? Totally passive and cowardice. There's a difference. So on that level, you start seeing who you are. When you create balance, which is beauty, beauty is the action that is taken in its right place, in its right time. I'm telling you, I'm dealing with a lot of issues within our community. And a lot of them have to do with what? Beautiful actions. 
For the women, I'm just going to say one thing. Please, this is all that men want. Nothing else. This is a beautiful action, an example. Okay? Then I'm going to talk to the men. Okay? One thing that men absolutely adore, just do this, and I guarantee you, you'll be happy, and he will be happy. Few words with a few actions. When he gets home, go to the door, and as hard as it is to smile, just put a big smile on your face. And it's so difficult. I know you want to yell at him for getting the groceries wrong. And I know you want to just go off. You know, where are the kids? You missed the time. What's wrong with you? I know it's hard, okay? But it's a secret, okay? Do that. And watch what happens. I'm saying if you have a great husband and he's a good person. And he deserves that. Have your manners be beautiful. Your actions be beautiful. Just like you see a beautiful face, you can have beautiful actions. Then, you know what you do? Give him a hug. That, you've sealed it. If you do that, you've sealed it. Then, you know, for the rest of the day, you don't have to do anything. There's something that happens inside of a man when something like that happens. All he wants is that kind of support. This is the akhlaq of Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. She used to be like that to Imam Ali. And guess what? You do that, those actions are your ticket to heaven. Bottom line. No matter how harsh some of the situations are. And trust me, I know. For the brothers, beautiful actions, right? Listen, when she's going off on the phone or right in your face, you know what you do? What do you do? See this? That, that's all you have to do. Say, wow. Oh, my God. Don't even listen. Don't listen. Okay? Just, wow. Is that what happened? Oh, my God. What? Is that what they did to you? She's just venting. That's all she wants to do. Don't do this, okay? Don't go into problem-solving mode. Don't. You will become the problem. If somebody got to her at work, now you're the problem. Guaranteed. I guarantee you that. Okay? Do some research and watch what will happen. I guarantee you what I'm saying is true. On psychological means, it's emotional coping versus what? Problem coping. You're trying to solve a problem that's not going to be solved. She doesn't want to solve it. She doesn't want a solution. So what do you do? Show me, guys. Show me what you do. So right there. Let me see all the beautiful smiles. That's all you do. Listen, it works amazingly. Okay? So on that level, you smile. That's a beautiful action. Let her talk. Then, you know what happens after like 10, 15 minutes? And you're so interested in what she's saying. You know what happens? Now some of you, Allah say, it'll be like two hours. But you're going to have to bear the pain. Okay? But it's okay. It's worth it. After that, you know what she'll say to you? My God, you're such a good person. Everyone should be like you. I just want you to listen. Beautiful actions. Examples just for both sides. Okay, now, let me give you an understanding if you don't have these actions. Let's go to the other side now. Let's say you as a person, you don't know what you don't know. I'm going to give you five steps. Five steps. That if you do this right, you'll be able to look at yourself and you'll be able to manifest. Why then? beautiful actions that when you see your wife or the wife sees the husband you know what happens there's an affinity we like each other wait 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 we love each other 
the reason why I'm choosing this right now, there's a lot of problems with our relationships. Our relationships are falling apart. Individuals make up families. Families make up communities. Communities make up societies. If you as a person don't understand your value within a community and you break a family, either side, God forbid, you have no idea what you're doing to the community because that's a brick within the community. And imagine a house that's withered and its bricks are worn. What's going to happen to its community? What's going to happen to our next generation? That's our responsibility. I go around the world not for the adults, for the kids, for the next generation. Now, let's go to the five steps of you watching yourself. If you do these five things, I give you permission to take out your phone and write them down. Okay? This, if you truly want to know yourself as a person, go try to find psychology, books, whatever. You're not going to find what I'm saying. This is our religion. This is what it does. And this is what we have. It can challenge anything. Spin it, take it, take a picture, do whatever you want. Nothing can stand to what we have. Nothing at all. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. The reason being, when you study psychology, at the end of the day, it will give you certain equations. It doesn't give you the solutions all the time. Take it to the religion, you'll find your answers. Our religion is a program, it's a code. The more you have of it, the more you're free. All of us, we think we're free right now. Our phones, we can just tap in any second. And you can what? Relieve yourself from what? From anything, any situation that you're in at this moment right now, you can just click on a phone and what happens? You go to somewhere else. Someone else has got your attention. What happens to your relationships with your father, with your mother, with your brother, with your sister? They're being drained. They're being eroded. That's what's happening. We're becoming more individualized by the second. Your ego now is at full flare. Me, 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 me. Narcissism is taken on a whole nother level. Entitlement is taken on a whole nother level. No. That's not who we are. Imam Ali alayhi salam and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, they say, if you want Allah to fulfill your needs, fulfill the needs of others. I'm up here filling my book, hoping that one of you will take a concept. It could be a mother who's teaching her child. That thought resonates. It turns into mental DNA. It goes into the system. It's programmed. Now it's passed down through lineages. Why do you think we have our religion right now? Because people have done that. And Imam Ali alayhi salam, he has these things. They exist. If you just study, he says one of his, after a battle, Imam Ali says to one of his companions, he says to him, he says, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen. He says, I wish my brother was here. His brother had died in battle. He says, I wish my brother was here. Look at what the Imam says. He says, did he love me? Did your brother love me? It's an emotional state. It's a connection. What is your heart connected to at the end of the day? When Salah goes, is your heart, does it have that affinity? It wants to read. It wants to be in submission. Is that your heart? Talk to it. Talk to yourself. Ask yourself these questions. Who am I? Who am I? Or when that happens, you're just like, what? It's okay. You rationalize and you tell yourself, I'm safe, I'm okay. 
I don't need to pray. Prayer doesn't matter. Prayer is a beautiful action. Akhlaq. It's beautiful. You're saying, I submit to something greater than me. I am humble. So many signs happen. Let's put that aside just for right now. He says to him, he says this, did he love me? Love. He says, Ya Amir al Mu'minin, yes, he did love you. Imam Ali alayhi salam says to him, he says, then no, he was with us and he will be with us no matter what. It's the love of truth. That's beauty. That when you see something wrong, you don't just look away. He saw something wrong, he went to the side of the road. His passion, he needs that interview. It's his job. He goes to the side of the road to help someone else. That's a beautiful act. But watch how Allah rewards. Watch. When you do beautiful things and your actions become beautiful, watch how Allah rewards you. It's incredible when you do that. It's incredible. So now, he says to him, he says, there are even people, he says to his companion, there are people who are still in the wombs of women and in the loins of men who have not come yet that will come one day in the future and they will uphold our flag. Here you go. Here's your opportunity. He's talking about us. Why do we have these things? Because people decided that we're before you to keep the message alive. To pass a thought that's a hadith, that's guaranteed, and it's transformed through time. To transform people. Not transform the hadith itself. To transform people. And now you read, and something happens to your heart, and you connect to it. This wasn't always like this. It wasn't. People had to do a lot of work. So you what? Can put it as a decoration on yourself. I'm sorry. That's not what it's for. Don't use it in the wrong way. Please. Please. That the Prophet says, Ya Allah, my people have taken this for granted. He's talking to you and me as well. Some of us are not like that. Some of us, this lives with us. It's in our heart. So now, if we want to be those people, what should we do to maintain who we are? There are five steps. Number one, the first thing, please take these five down. Okay? Number one, al-muraqaba. I told you search. You will not find this. Search. This is our religion. This is how we understand the self. Our imams and our prophet were scientists of the soul. Not just the body. Not just action. Not just what we think is right or wrong. They were scientists of you. They can give you the program. Do you want it? Do you want to download it? It's up to you. No one on the day of judgment is going to stand next to you. No one. You're going to be alone by yourself. Even a suckling mother will drop her child. She will drop him. A child whose hair will turn gray on that day. Those are warnings for you. Some people need those verses. And some people need other verses of hope. Jannatin. Tajrimin tahti al anhar. What? Beautiful things Allah describes. Beautiful heavens. Some people need hope. Some of us need fear. We don't have enough of it. We think we're safe. And what? I play my music. It's okay. It doesn't matter. Allah's going to forgive me. I what? Nullify my sin. I make it small. Imam Ali alayhi salam, he says, the worst person is the one who makes his sins light. I'm sorry, the worst sin is the one you deem light. Wow. Don't think you're safe. Because Malik al Maut will visit you every single day. He's coming. You and Allah are going to have a meeting at the end of the day. 
know that. You're going to meet him, whether you like it or not. What are you going to have in your hands? What have you done? Me, I'm selfish. Up here, I'm selfish. I swear to you, I'm not trying to save you. I swear to you, I'm not. I'm not trying to get you to go, you know what? Ajwisam, mashallah, this guy is so great. I swear to you, it does nothing for me. I'm nominated to speak at Amazon. Do you think I care? I swear to you, do you think I care? I don't care. I get it, I lose it, it doesn't matter to me. I don't care. Because at the end of the day, I'm just filling my book. And hopefully, one of you takes the idea, like I said, and they plant it in their mind, and they water it with emotions in their heart. And now, that's it. If your heart ignites and it connects to the right things, my God, what happens to you? It's happened to me. I wasn't always religious. I was always in the here. I didn't even go to the mosque. I didn't even know. I had no idea. But something happened. I went to an Islamic retreat. Four days. Changed my life. I came back a different person. I don't know what happened to me. It felt like I was floating. I, I literally, I swear to you, I was high. If that, I've never been high before. I've never taken drugs. Never did anything. But I, I swear to you, I think that's how high people feel. I, I don't know. So when I come back, it shifted my whole trajectory in life. And I never thought I would be up here. I never thought that would happen. One of my nephews, he says to his dad today, and he's actually here, and he says to him, he says, Baba, he's very young, and he says to him, you know, I don't think I'm going to make a lot of money but I think I want to be a sheikh. That's so beautiful. To have that thought and to be that young. That's incredible. I swear to you, like in my heart, I was crying. I didn't show up my face. But in my heart, I was crying. You know why? Because that's a beautiful thing. It is. It's so beautiful. The identity is being formed so early. This person doesn't waver. They don't move off the path. Please, look at the kids. Look. Trust me. Trust me. There's someone that's after them that's stronger than you. Protect them. Protect their minds from the thoughts and the ideas. That's what you have to protect. So when they go out into the world, they have beautiful mannerism. They can uphold the truth. First step, al-muraqaba. The person Watch yourself. Watch yourself. That's the first step. Watch who you are. Look at yourself. Did I smile when my husband came home or did I just do this? When she was venting to me, did I, oh Allah, you always say that, okay? Like, I understand. I'm telling you what to do. Why aren't you listening to me? Do I look at my actions? Do I do that? Do I go step by step and I watch my day? Do I do that? That's number one. Number two. Al-muhasaba. Number two is for you to what? Take accounting. So number one connects to number two. Number one, there's something called awareness training. Okay? In number one, al-muraqaba is the person who watches their actions. Awareness training is something I do with my clients. This is where you figure out your triggers, your bad habits, what they are. This is the first step. So the person who does awareness training is you figure out your triggers, their subconscious. You don't even know they exist. This is how you've been programmed, maybe from your little kid to a higher stage in terms of adulthood. But something has happened to you along the way. And you don't realize that you trigger. And when you trigger, you become angry. And you just react. Awareness training is you marking down every time that thing happens. And then what? The time of day, 
who was around, you start taking account of who you are. That's awareness training, al muraqaba Number two, al muhasaba You take accounting of who you are. Now you ask yourself why. Why did I do that action? Why? What's the reason my heart is doing that? Why am I submitting to this low regressive desire? Why? Why when I'm alone behind a computer, I'm doing things I shouldn't be doing? Why am I sending certain texts that you know what? My husband is in the next room, but I'm, you know what? There's something that's happening. I'm watching social media and there's people that are so happy and they're portraying this concept that, oh my God, life is so beautiful because they're on vacation. So I go and I nag and I tell him, you know what? Why don't you take me on vacation? Do I watch myself like that? Do I say that this is wrong? Hasib nafsi, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he says, Hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu. Take account of yourself before you what? You will be accounted for. That day is coming. And you and me, it's coming. Was inuha qabla an wa tuzanu. And weigh it. Weigh your what? Your actions. That's all you have. At the end of the day, everything you have in this world is rented. Everything you're going to have to give back, even your own body. It's not yours. Some of us, we have plastic surgery on the outside. But you know where we need the plastic surgery? On the inside. There's a difference. That's the truth. Number two, al-muhasaba. Number three, now I've committed the sin. I've gone across. I've said things to my father I shouldn't have said. I've said things to my mother I shouldn't have said. And I get, now what? I feel that regret. I became angry at the wrong time. I said the wrong things. Now my actions are turning ugly, not beautiful. Number three, al-mu'ataba. Al-mu'ataba is now feeling remorse. There's a difference between a munafiq and a mu'min. A munafiq, there's a hadith by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, sallu ala Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad. A munafiq, when he commits a sin, or when she commits a sin, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi says it's like a fly that lands on their nose and they brush it off. That's how they look at a sin. It doesn't bother them. But when a mu'min commits a sin, it's like he says, Jabalu Abu Qabais. Qubais. That's the mountain that Rasulullah stood on and said to them, Am I, if I told you there's a caravan behind this mountain, would you believe me? They said, yes. You are a sadiq al-ameen. Then he goes, I tell you, I am the prophet of Allah. He says, La ilaha illallah wa muhammadun rasulullah. That's who we have. That's your savior. Trust me. You own nothing but that. The second you grab onto that is you grabbed onto salvation. Bottom line. You can fight any war that's here. Any war. The psychological war that we're in, you can fight it and you can win easily. Number three, al-mu'ataba. A person who's like that, he says, for them, it's like they have a mountain. They feel a mountain on their shoulders when they commit the sin. They don't eat. They feel bad. They feel down. Don't beat yourself up. Go towards what? Repentance. Ataytuka ya Rabbi mu'tarifan, munkasira, muniba. I've come to you, Ya Allah, and Kumil. He says, I've come to you. What? Regretful, acknowledging, 
please forgive me. Go there. When you have problems, there's a beautiful place in your mind, and it's called sujood. I've told my daughter, anytime you have a problem, go somewhere by yourself. Go into sujood. By yourself. Do that. Watch what happens. Your heart softens. It softens. So number three, al-mu'ataba. Feel the weight of the sin. But then what? What should you do? Should you just let it go? I'm done. I feel good. I went to Dua Kumail. I had a little tear. I feel great. I went to Ashura. I cried my eyes out. It feels awesome. It's incredible. It's a venting. I vented. I'm done. Now you've turned like some of the men, they turn into women at that time, which is beautiful. Buka, there's whole hadith series on stuff like that. It's a healing process. It's beautiful. When your heart can cry, it's a beautiful thing. That means your heart is soft. When the tear it dries up, the heart becomes hard. So now, number four is what? When you get to this stage, you start understanding what? Now you have to fight. And it's called al-muharaba. That's the fourth stage. This is where you fight the self now. وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى Surely, the one who what? Is afraid of his Lord. Fear not in the wrong way. Fear that I don't want to disappoint. Just like I don't want to disappoint my father or mother, I don't want to disappoint Allah. I love you, Allah. It's not because I'm fearing, I'm trembling, and I'm so scared. No. I fear you because I don't want to disappoint you. So now, and I want remove the regressive desires by telling the self, no, I'm fighting. And in, in the Quran, it says, لا أقسم بالنفس اللوامة. The one who accuses himself or herself. She goes inside. She does introspection. She listens to her thoughts. Then from there, what happens? She sees the sin. She maps it out. She even writes it down. I have a schedule. She goes and looks into the sin. And she said, why did I do that? What emotions did I feel? What thoughts went through my mind? And I take a schedule and I find out why. I'm figuring out the trigger. Number three, she does what? What was number three? Can anyone tell me? I gave you permission. Your hand went up too quick, so give me a, give me a second. Let me test everybody. Okay, what was number three? It, raise, no, no, raise your hand, please. Don't, don't give it up. Number three, can any, just raise your hand. Let's say if you know, do you know? Okay, mashallah, it's excellent. Okay, <laughs> good. Listen, I'm collecting deeds here. I need more. So the more of you that know, the better for me. Okay, I'm being selfish. I'm being honest with you. Okay, on the day of judgment, I can say, Ya Allah, look, bring this picture back right here. You guys will see my vision. You'll see how I'm looking at things. And all your hands will count as hasanat for me. So go ahead, raise them up high. I want to see them up high. Okay, ready? MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Okay, excellent. Alhamdulillah. I just collected. Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So now, al muharaba Number three is what? Somebody now say it. You can say it. al muataba The person who what? He feels the remorse. The fourth is what? The fight. I want to give you some, some psychology, and I'm almost done. In psychology, here's what happens when you are in a fight, mentally. A mental fight, here's what happens. Two thoughts will enter a ring. One thought, and it says, in this corner, who watch boxing? Who, who watches boxing? Okay. And they say, in this corner, we have in, we'll, we'll say blue trunks, okay? Weighing 250 pounds, very muscular. We have something what? Called Salah. Right? In this corner, we have in the red trunks, weighing 110 pounds, very skinny, called what? Fortnite. A game. They're going to fight. 
We're going to see who's going to win. Who's going to make the decision? We have a referee. You know what his name is? You. You're going to make a decision. You are the promoter. You are the person who's going to set up the whole fight from A to Z. It's all happening in your head. Congratulations. Now, your heart, which are your fans, guess what? They start cheering. And when they introduce Salah, everybody's like really quiet. When they introduce the game, everybody erupts because your heart is connected to that. So you tell yourself, it's okay. It's okay. I'm just going to what? I'm just going to take a f five minutes. Give me five minutes. I'll get up. And you start delaying little by little. You know when you make that decision, here's what happens. That thought that's in the red corner, which is the game, gets a dopamine kick. You know what happens there? It's becoming stronger. Now it's 120 pounds with a little more muscle. You know what happens to Salah? It goes from 250 to 240. It gets weaker. بَلِ الْإِنسَانِ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ لَبَصِيرًا وَلَوْ أَلْقَى مَعَذِيرًا Surely you are a witness against yourself. And you will put forth your excuses. You will say, Ya Allah, I just needed a little bit. It's okay. But you're becoming something else. That's المحاربة. When you're fighting yourself. Guess what? Every decision you make, you're either becoming stronger or weaker in faith. Every single decision you make will be brought to you. In the Quran, it says what? وَمَنْ عَمَلَ مَثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى Surely, if you do an atom's weight of good, you're going to see it. And if you do an atom's weight of bad, you're going to see it. It's going to be presented to you. Your book is going to be presented. And nothing will be missing. المحاربة Number five. Now, let's say you're strong, capable. Salah is 300 pounds now. And it's about to hit 310 because your heart is so connected. Now you're getting up in the middle of the night. You're doing what? Al-Munajat. And you're doing Salat al-Layl. And now you're getting closer to Allah. By the way, the way you get closer to Allah is not by the wajibat. It's not by that. Mostly everybody does that. Al-wajibat is like doing Salah, fasting. Some people now, they don't even care for that. Like fasting now, is a, it's an outdated thing. People, I can't. My body, my God, I'm on diet. My finish, come on, man. It's too hard. Nine o'clock. Kids are doing it. We rationalize. We lie to ourselves. And we make ourselves feel better by removing the guilt. It's okay. Guess what? Someone's writing. They're writing. Right here? This guy and this guy? Trust me. They're writing everything. You're going to have a book presented to you like this. Guess who the authors are? They're sitting right on your shoulders. They're writing everything and every word you say. Imam Ali alayhi salam. He says, watch your words. Because it's as if they're being written by the two angels in a letter to Allah. Every word you say, you're writing a letter like you're writing an email to Allah. So be careful on how you talk. Number five, now you're becoming strong. You're getting there, and now your faith is stronger. al muwadaba That's the fifth level. The fifth level is now maintaining on doing the good. Because now you've beaten the bad. You flipped. And you've made yourself a stronger being. When you do that, and you collect yourself at that moment, and when the temptation comes, you tell it, no, I'm sorry. I'm too strong. Watch yourself when you're by yourself. Watch yourself there. I can tell you some facts that I cannot talk about that are scary in terms of what's happening with our youth. It's scary. 
This is a youth club. The next time there's a retreat or some kind of event, be greedy because someone is offering you what? An opportunity. The person... Sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. There's a person. My mother was coming to the house. She lives not too far away from me. This happened about a couple years back. I just want to show you how beautiful actions can be expanded, and I'll finish with this. My mother was walking to my house. She gets to my house and she has a tear in her eye. I ask her, why? Why are you crying? She says to me, she says, this is a tear for Imam Hussein alayhi salam. I said, alhamdulillah. Then she tells me, and it's for a man that just did something. This person pulls up and he says, he's older, he's very old. And he says to her, he says, Ya Haji, do you want me to take you somewhere? Do you need a ride? It meant a lot to my mother. Beautiful mannerism. Akhlaq. She cried. She told me the story. Now I'm telling you the story. Why? Because I want to hold his name. I've never met him. I've never met him. I don't even know who he is. But look, he doesn't know that her son is a speaker. He doesn't know. He doesn't know that I'm going to say the story over and over and over again. He doesn't know what he's collected. He has no idea. But for right now, give him a loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. That's how you collect. Simple little actions. And when they turn and they bloom into beautiful things, on the day of judgment, when they're handed to you, you're going to say, thank God I pulled over. He pulls over. He waits for the truck. The truck gets there. He tells her, do you need anything? She's like, no. He leaves. He gets there and he's late. When he's late, he's waiting in the room. They're like, we're sorry. We're having some delays. And we're going to be late on you. He's like, okay. Look how Allah rewards they plan and Allah plans. And Allah is the best of planners. When Allah's got your sustenance in his hands, don't think you made it. Don't think it's you. No, he's given it to you. And it's your responsibility to do the right things with it. From your money and your time. He's sitting there and he's waiting. The door opens. Who walks in? The lady that was on the side of the road. He's shocked. She's shocked. He's like, what are you doing here? She's like, what are you doing here? He's like, I'm here for an interview. She's like, I'm interviewing you. Why do we love beautiful actions? If your heart didn't move at the end of that story, you've got some work to do. Your emotions are not right. We love beautiful actions because they're balanced. You as a person will become beautiful when your actions become beautiful. 
So when my little nephew says, I want to become a sheikh, and he's a little what? Little kid. That's a beautiful action. Ammo, I love you. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Any quick questions, comments, concerns? Tawadal Habib. So it's a great question. I'll reiterate, just make sure I'm saying the right thing, okay? So the question is really, I'm overwhelmed because I don't have enough time to prioritize my responsibilities. I have a very demanding job, which requires a lot of time. So that's time management, okay? So responsibility, underneath responsibility, understand, is time management. You have literally six categories of responsibility, that everything falls into. And correct me when I'm done with my reiteration, okay? Six levels of responsibility. Number one is your finances. Number two is your family and relationships. Number three is your own character development. Number four is your spirituality. Number five is your community. And number six is your own health. These are the six things that you have to balance. You ever seen someone is spinning basketballs? They spin basketballs. You have to spin all these all the time. Some of us, we can't even spin one. But you have to balance that. You have to be able to balance those things that you're talking about. So I have family, I have, which is then I have my job, and I have other things. What you're saying is I'm overwhelmed because I'm off balance. Life has got me in so many different ways. Now, here's what we do. Am I correct, by the way? Okay, so now, if that's the question, what should we do? Here, when we understand this, that at the end of the day, your time is a luxury. Your time is not yours. You don't get to spend it the way you want. It's not yours. Your time is being given to you. When you wake up and the first second you open up your eyes, understand that's a gift. That's a gift. When you sit there and you tell yourself, Alhamdulillah, Allah, you've just given me what? Time. You've given me 86,400 seconds in one day. That just went into my bank account. Now I need to spend those. How do I spend them? That time is not yours. Here's one issue from the outside. Our responsibilities here in terms of work are massive. They're massive. A lot of us, I'm sorry, we put our careers in front of our what? Kids. We put our careers in front of our marriage. We put our careers in front of what? So many other things. That family has become what? Secondary. Now, I'm not telling you that sometimes it's, not nece it's, it's necessary. You have to make things and make ends meet. You have to. But it's, if it's hindering your relationship, I don't care how much money you're making. When it hinders your spirituality, leave it. Drop it. I guarantee you, just do it. Don't even think. Just do it. Prioritize your principles. Because at the end of the day, Allah is going to give you your sustenance anyway. Imam Ali alayhi salam, please take this right now. Write this down. 273 in Nahj al balagha That hadith. It's a small little paragraph. And Imam Ali, please, read it tonight, if you can. It's in the short sayings. It's in the back of Nahj al -Balagha. There's sermons, letters, and what? Sayings. The, I'm sorry, letters, sermons, and sayings in Nahj al Just read. There's 481 of them. Read them. 273 states that 
Allah has guaranteed your provisions. They're guaranteed. How many of you can do that, really? Say, you know what? Yeah, Allah, my provisions are guaranteed. It's a form of safety and security. It's not that you drop your obligations, you sit home, and you say, wifey, I'm done. Khalas. Allah, see, look at the hadith. See, I'm done. I'm going to sit at home, recliner, Netflix, I'm done. Alhamdulillah, what a great life. Start becoming overweight. She looks at you. Yeah, I'm shahar. What happened? Is that the way it works? No. You have to meet the conditions. Imam Ali alayhi salam, he says, have a high work ethic. One of the things I love about my father, alhamdulillah, he's instilled in us, what? Work ethic. The man in seven months bought a house. No English. Five kids and a wife. He bought a house. I'm proud to be his son. I'm proud to stand up here and say, you know what? Alhamdulillah, that's my father. I'm grateful that he did that. That's a man. That's how you stand. That's not easy. It's not. But those are the shoes you got to fill. That's not easy to do. Imagine I threw you right now in China. Five kids and a wife. And no language. Do you think it's going to be easy? So when we're coming overwhelmed, prioritize. Those six categories, prioritize them. See what you're lacking in. Is it your spirituality? Is it time for your kids? Then reorder those categories that I gave you. Reorder them. If you're missing spirituality, listen, I swear to you, I have people making millions of dollars. I have some of my clients, they're making millions of dollars. You tell them, go to a funeral, you know what happens? They're scared. They can't go. I can't go to a funeral because I'm scared. You know why? Because in my spiritual domain, I'm a little baby. I may have millions of dollars, and I spend so much money. I spend so much time earning that money. But when it comes time to pray, I won't do it. I'm dead spiritually. In the financial world, you're a giant. People respect you. Look at your car, mashallah. When it comes to coming down and praying, what happens? You're a little infant. Because there's no time put into that what? Category. Look, whenever, number one, when you have balance, you have certain emotions that no one can touch. You're happy. You're grateful. You give when you need to. Even if you have it or you don't have it, you feel secure. Why? Because you're sitting in Allah's palm. That's beauty. It's the most beautiful thing. Now, I know those kids can get what? A little crazy. It's hard raising kids these days too. So I give it to you. You have three, mashallah alik. That's, that's like two now. Like people, I can't breathe. Honey, take them. Ma'ash It's difficult. It's also the country. So I'm not just putting it on you. It's also the country. The country puts a lot of responsibility. If you get a car, you need insurance. If you get a house, you have a payment and a mortgage payment. There's principal and there's what? You have to pay interest. Then guess what? On top of that, what happens? You need insurance on the house. Then you need to feed the kids. There's, so, there's a threshold that's set to keep you what? On what? The hamster wheel. That's what it's set. There's thresholds. It's a business. You're part of a business. You're part of a greater business. These things are set. There's a lot of people that understand the way we work and our social standards at a completely different level. And they keep us spinning. You know what they're after? Your time. That's what they're after. So balance it. Don't lose yourself. Balance it. Steal what you can from this world. The Prophet ﷺ, he says, he says, these days, when the day comes, it will steal from you. When the night comes, it will steal from you. He says, steal from it. Take something for the future. Have a good action. Balance your life. Okay, get what you want out of it. So that's what happens. So it's our society, the way we're 
you know, the, the kind of the pressure cooker that we're put under, okay? Some of us, we can't balance in terms of those six categories, and it becomes really, it takes a toll on our, our major, major toll on our health, by the way. That's where it takes a major toll on, because we can't balance the responsibility. I'll be honest with you. I had a six-figure job. <clears throat> I left it. I left it. I didn't care. I left. I've made more money this year than I've ever made. That was a year ago. I didn't care. My time is in my hands. I didn't care. It's not easy to leave things behind, especially when they represent security, especially when they do that. Because we think money is security. Money is not security. Imam Ali, alayhi salam, he says, your money and your health, I'm sorry, your, your health and your wealth are not security. Security is with Allah. You've got to work on your spirituality. So I hope that partially answers your question. It's a deeper question. I would have to know your situation. I'm just giving you generalities. Any other questions real quick? Go ahead. <clears throat> Al-Muwadhaba. Al-Muwadhaba. It's a weird word when you hear it. I don't know if many people have heard it, but... Any other questions, quick questions, comments, concerns? Otherwise, we'll move forward. Going once, twice. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Thank you, Hajj, for the beautiful lectures. Give him another loud salawat, please. Uh, so that concludes our program. Thank you for joining us. Next week, we'll have Fatimiyah part two with Hajj Jalal uh, Mughni, inshallah. And then two weeks from now, if you'd like to listen to Hajj Wassam again, we're honored and lucky enough to have him again for another program. So we'll see you guys, inshallah. Again, we're always here Friday nights at 8 p.m. So, Salah Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad.